Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology and there are many others that are available to you. So I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. Vaginal specimens can confirm the presence of vaginosis or vaginitis, but in these cases, culture is no longer recommended because they are often inaccurate and misleading. A careful interpretation of a gram stain of vaginal material is used to evaluate the vaginal flora at the time of collection. Now, a swab is used for collecting a vaginal sample for evaluation. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. In this case, a slide can be prepared at the time of the patient's examination and the slide sent to the laboratory for staining. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection, and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. In addition to standard personal protective equipment, you will need a glass slide, since a microscopic preparation is to be made for staining in the laboratory. The swab may also be sent to the laboratory for their preparation of the slide. Explain to the patient what you are about to do. Open the swab package and remove the swab. First, wipe away an excessive amount of secretion or discharge. Using a swab, firmly obtain secretions from the mucosal membrane of the vaginal vault. Doctors may choose to use a pipette to aspirate these secretions and submit those to the laboratory for analysis. If a culture has been requested and you're using e-swab, you will only need one swab. If you're not using e-swab, you will need to obtain two swabs, one for culture and one for staining. Avoid touching the swab applicator below the molded breakpoint as this could lead to contamination and incorrect results. Gently remove the swab from the patient. Remove the screw cap from the tube and insert the swab into the transport container all the way to the bottom of the tube. Holding the swab shaft close to the rim of the tube and keeping the tube away from the face, break the swab shaft at the pre-molded break point. Screw the cap on tightly to prevent leakage and dispose of the swab shaft in a regular trash receptacle. Apply patient identification label or write patient information on the tube label. Follow the standard operating procedures of transport and testing in your facility. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Generally, specimens should be transported at refrigerated or room temperature and arrive at the laboratory within two hours of collection. If not tested immediately, the specimen may be held at refrigerator or room temperature for 24 to 48 hours depending on the sample type. Refer to manufacturer's package insert for specific instructions. 
Please note that the eSwab liquid amines fluid maintains the viability of diverse bacteria. Do not send a dry swab as this will lead to unsatisfactory results. If the tube spills its contents prior to inserting the swab, the liquid is non-toxic. Simply put the swab into another tube before sending it to the laboratory and discard the spilled tube. If the tube spills after contamination, follow procedure for blood and body fluid cleanup. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction. If contaminated fluid splashes onto the person collecting the sample, treat as a blood and body fluid exposure. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction.